Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to the mall with my parents. Probably, so I'm just gonna do a simple get ready with me. I use my toner pad that I'm testing, which is really, really good. It gets rid of like the really fine dead skin on your face. So your skin's like really smooth, but it's also moisturizing. And it's like amazing with cream cream skin. <gasps> you know one thing I've been so into lately? Vaseline. I used to be like, I used to hate Vaseline. I'd be like, why would anyone want to put Vaseline on their face? But Vaseline is amazing for keeping moisture in the skin. It keeps, uh, what is it? Trans epidermal water loss. So basically it like coats the skin. It keeps everything from like evaporating there, which is what I needed. So I'll moisturize my face and then I'll use that on top. And my skin has been loving it so much. Uh, the thing is, Vaseline doesn't really moisturize your skin. It just holds it in. So um, if you're suffering from dry skin, try that out. Before I use foundation, I'm going to use a little bit of pore primer. This is um, one size, Secure the Blur primer. This is Patrick Starr's beauty brand. Uh, for foundation, I'm using YSL All Hours. I, for a while, okay. So I, I would film the boy B with uh, Eddie, right? Over at Sal Korean's office. And they have a lot, they have, it's a beauty company obviously. So there's a lot of like, just random skincare makeup sitting like at the office. And so sometimes I would go and steal some. And one thing that caught my eye was this VT pack, Pro Gloss Collagen Packed in number 23, because the packaging is so pretty. But it's actually one of these things, and the coverage is really good. I ended up buying it myself because the one I stole from the office, like, the thing broke. It gives you like that, like you know the, the the skin that you see a lot of like Korean actresses and actors have like the really glossy skin, and it's super moisturizing because there's actual like honey in there. I don't know. Here it's kind of like I, I wear a mask when I go out, so it like it uh, really mudos on the mask. So I've just been using a matte foundation, which is this one, the YSL one. I don't like putting a thick layer of foundation though, so what I'm doing is using a spatula to apply it. You can do this at home too. You can literally, you can get any art spatula that they have at the art store, or even the dull side of like a butter knife. I use that with a sponge. These sponges I always use are actually available on Amazon. I didn't bring these with me to uh, America, but surprisingly they are available on Amazon. The Happy Dim sponges. Happy Dim, she's a makeup artist in Korea. She actually does uh, a lot of idols makeup. I know she did like Daya. She has her own YouTube channel as well, so I kind of pick it up like this. I kind of brush it on like this. So you get like the thinnest layer of foundation as possible. And then before it dries, I... This doesn't really make it any faster to apply your foundation, but if you do have this issue of like putting too much foundation at once, oh, that's so satisfying. Also, you don't have to buy like, I know there's some foundations where it's like, they advertise it as like, oh, feels really thin and like lightweight and all that, but you can just take your regular foundation. Actually, to be honest, this works better with those really runny types of foundations. It's a little bit more difficult with like the more thick, kinds of foundations, that moussey kinds, the ones that don't really drop down your hand when you pump it out. And the great thing about doing it this way as well is because you're putting such a thin layer on your skin, when you're using the sponge to apply, uh, kind of blend it, the sponge doesn't really absorb very much. It's blending it, but also just taking off like whatever excess, if any, on there. And so when you wash your sponge, it comes out super easily because the product doesn't like go all the way into the sponge. It is hard to get the nose a little bit sometimes, so sometimes I don't even do the nose, and as I'm blending my cheeks, whatever's on the sponge, I just put on my nose, but... Another benefit, you use so little foundation, you guys still have this extra on here, so I really didn't need to use a full pump foundation. I wanna try this new Anastasi Magic Concealer that I bought, Magic Touch Concealer, this is number four. When you're looking for a good concealer, one that actually covers stuff, when you're testing it in the store, what I like to do is put it on the inside of my hand right here. And when you blend it, do you see how it's kind of like going into the little fine lines on my hand? What a bad, con oh, what I consider a bad concealer, what those kind of do is kind of like, when you're blending, it kind of looks like it's watering out, like it's thinning out, it looks all watery. You wanna look for a concealer that actually covers the fine lines and all that. To me, that tells me the coverage is good and it will actually stay in place. I never use it straight from the applicator. I put some on the back of my hand like this. I use like a flat kind of 
foundation, well, this is a concealer brush, but it decides between a foundation and concealer brush. And I really soak it in. And every time I finish using this, I wipe it off with a tissue, like a wool tissue, a wet wipe. It sounds kind of disgusting, but if you're just using the brush on yourself, that's fine. The building up of product inside the brush, this is what you want, where it becomes super flat. And so when you apply it, it goes on like that. It looks like I'm putting a lot on, but this is such a thin, 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 thin layer. I'm gonna use the smaller sponge. Actually, this was the original size that came out, but I always felt like it took me forever to do my foundation. So it was nice that they came out with a jumbo version. Here. Oh, I, I really like this concealer. I said I try, I wanna try it, but I actually did try it already. And I really, really like it. tip of my nose bridge in between my brows. This area for me is really red, so it's really important I cover it with concealer because it can make it look like I almost have like a unibrow. One product I really wish was so much easier to access, these Malu Wilts Camouflage Cream Concealers. I want to use it to cover my the, the little line of my dark circle. Um, I put it on this little concealer brush. And just like the other brush I was showing you, I like to really soak it into the bristles. Just putting this on the line. Do you see the difference? Yes. And then here, cause there's a lot of redness under my nose. And if I don't cover that, it makes my nose look wider. So. You see the difference in color? This is the more skin tone one up here, and this is the more greenish one. Now on this concealer brush, I have the green one on, and I need to cover this redness on the outer corner of my eye. I don't do this all the time, but I notice if I don't, it really f***ed up the way I do my eyeliner. If I'm not doing like an eye look or not doing eyeliner that day, I don't cover it because what happens is, it makes the eyes look much shorter, if that makes sense. With the shadow dark area there, it kind of elongates the eye, but also if you cover it, it shortens the eye, so. My mom made me one of my favorite Filipino foods, longanisa. So I'm gonna go eat first. I'm starving right now. I will, I will eat and I will, I'll come back. I'm feeling satiated now, so I feel like I can actually talk on camera. Earlier, I was so hungry, I was like, oh, Pony posted a video, I think, I guess it was sponsored by um, Shein or whatever, She Glam, that one website. So she used a bunch of the makeup and I was like, oh, I wanna try. And these things are like five to $10 or whatever. I'm gonna make a separate video about that, but I really wanted to try this um, Insta Ready powder in the top, you have a under eye powder and in the bottom you have a overall face powder. And I also ordered the little peach looking puff. Let's try this on one side. Oh, that shit is like, this got color. This is in the shade Bisque, I think. Oh wow, that actually works really, really well. Okay, now I'm gonna go into a little bit of contour. I'm gonna use my Petty Peta V shading in the shade three hazel gray. And I'm gonna take it on the sides of my nose and actually into my eyebrows as like a base for what I fill in my brows. I noticed when I wash my brushes really clean and it's all white, when I actually kind of just tap it in, the powder doesn't actually go on the brush very well. So what I do is I really like get it on there and then I yang chujo on the lid, portion control, make sure it's in the brush, and then that way I have a sufficient amount. Because I noticed before, if I just like tap, I don't get anything on the brush. And that's why when I would do this, I noticed I'm just erasing my foundation because I'm like, where's the pigment? Doing it this way, I have a sufficient amount on the brush. 
and when I'm contouring my uh, the upper part of my nose, not really here, but actually on the part of the eye where it actually, what is it? Kind of like actually goes in. Oh, the part where it actually goes in here. Cause I notice if I, I used the contour just like straight up like this, it would make my nose look bigger and it would make my brows look too close together. Get more on the brush and I kind of run it through my brows. And then since we're already doing the nose anyway, I'm gonna take a little bit of highlighter. This is a makeup for everyone. This is one I've, I've had this for years and years and years and I still really like it. Pro Light Fusion. I don't know if they still sell this. Here. And then right here. Like that. Now I'm gonna take this Anastasia Brow Definer in medium brown. I brush out the brow. The front part I brush up. In the back part, I brush down because that's naturally how the, the hair grows. You see how this part is the darkest here? I don't really fill that in because if you start there, then this gets darker. And so you start going out, right? Then this gets a little bit darker, but this part is still the darkest. So I kind of avoid this part in general and just darken the inner and the outer sides. On this side, I make brush strokes going downwards, kind of following how the hair naturally grows. And on the end, I kind of just naturally bring it down like that and brush a little bit. And on the front, I do have to fill in the bottom a little bit here because it's kind of like hairless there. A lot of these brow products are kind of like this really skinny triangle shape. What I do is this, this point right here, I take it on this side and I go upwards. It makes a much more natural looking like hair stroke than using it like, I don't know, on the side where you get a really thick line. I'm literally just using the little point here just to make strokes. and then brushing them up. And you wanna kind of step back and take a look at it. I used to be really into super straight brows, but my, uh, my eyes are more on the round side, so it doesn't really go well together if like I have super straight brows and all of a sudden my, my really round eye. Same with it, like if you have like a more, uh, your eye shape is more like flat across. If you have a sudden like arched brow, it looks really like not matchy. So, so I kind of shaped the brow to match the eye shape to kind of have that harmony. So I didn't really do that much, but do you see? The difference. Sometimes if you're trying to get that arch, you sometimes have to draw hair down here, kind of going downwards in a slope so you can get that curve. Because if you just try to make a curve solely based on the outer portion, like the arch area, sometimes it'll be like curved and then it'll be like flat on the front. That doesn't really look nice. So if you're trying to get a more curved eyebrow, make a curve here as well as the inner corner here by kind of starting to go downwards towards the nose area. And that will also kind of help with the slimming effect of the nose. And then I'm gonna use this Chung Sen Mo Artist Brow Pomade. This is like a new product, but it, it's just like a brow gel. The front, I kind of, I do this. Cause a lot of these things have like this kind of spoolie where one side is longer than the rest. I take that and I kind of just do this. And using the shorter bristles, I'll brush it upwards. I bought a new eye primer, but I can't find it. Oh, there it is. This one I've been using for years. This Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer. If you have oily eyelids, this is the best eyeshadow primer on the market. Like it literally, your eyes stay matte the entirety of the day. The shadows don't change at all, but I'm gonna try the uh, Urban Decay primer potion, which surprisingly I only just, this is the very first body I've ever bought. And this is like a cult classic. Now, truth be told, I didn't really bring any other eyeshadows besides my own. So that's what I'm going to use. In the, my introduction video for my palettes, I did use the more gray colors. So I'm going to use the more um, rosy colors this time. This is my daily mood lit in Moonlight Rose. So I'm going to use the shade Dried Rose. I'll do one eye just to show you the difference because I like to see that. <laughs> then I'm going to use Rose Fog. Again, I like to use the lid to even it out on the brush. And like I told you earlier, my eyes are quite like short this way. So to elongate my eyes, I keep the darkening, like the deepening shade more out here and keeping this space more wide open.
And then I'm using this shade, Dew in the Morning, in the center here. I kind of start with like a little, I kind of rub it in the middle and then I use my finger to pat it across the lid. Cause I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of just like doing this on the whole lid cause I feel I like to keep the dimension. Like I said, I like a gradient. You have the middle colors, which are like the base colors. And then you have the darker colors, which would be like the liner, the deepening shade. And then you, of course you need highlight to add the contrast. So that's why I added these um, shimmer shades, which are the highlights of the palette. I'm gonna use the liner color, Lulu. I'm like impressed every time I use my own damn eye eyeshadow palette. I like the way this is looking so far, so I don't want to make it too like bottom heavy. So the, for the bottom, I'm only going to be using uh, Pink Beam to highlight. Actually, let me just use the brush I used for my eyeliner. I got this as a recommendation from Pony's channel, but it's such a good brush. It's the MAC 231 brush. It's perfect for using shadow to line your eyes, but it's also really good for getting the outside corner if you're if you like to do that, I'm using Rose Fog. Actually, a mix of Rose Fog and Dried Rose. I don't want this to be too, too dark. This is the Rome and Han All Fix Mascara in Long Ash. It's their more grayish mascara. To be honest, I just use this mostly just to define my lashes a little bit. Mostly for the outer corner to kind of... Oh. Try to still. I mostly put on the outer corner here and on the center here. I'd want to focus more on elongating the eye. So instead of curling, I'm gonna use my heated lash curler. Instead of trying to make this as curled as possible, I would focus more on the outer corner to try and elongate the eye. Giving a slight curl. Because if you start to curl this part too, too much, it hits the top of the lids and like, I don't know, it's not really elongating your eye, it's kind of just like making your eye rounder. And then of course, pink beam on the inner corners, cause I need that. I'm gonna do my lips first before I do my blush, because sometimes I go overboard with my blush and it just throws the whole look off, so. I have two lip liners that I bought, and I bought this Mario Makeup by Mario one in Johnny. I have these new Rome End blur fudge things. I have these two. Now apparently this is supposed to really blur out your lips. Oh wow, look at that. I like to use a lip brush. This is just an art brush. It's important that you smooth them out. So you get into every little lip line and wrinkle. Put a little bit of the other one. Cool Rose Up, number seven, in the center. The blush I've been really going for lately is uh, this MAC one. It's called Blush Baby. I don't want to put too much of this on, so I'm going to use this really strange brush I have. You know that YouTuber Wayne Goss? It's his brush. It was a special limited edition brush from like several years ago, but if you have a really pigmented product and you have an issue with putting too much on all the time, this barely picks anything up. This is the Sheer Tone Formula Blush, so it's not supposed to have too much pigment anyway. See, it deposits like nothing, but that's good because I always get heavy-handed with brushes. Uh, blushes. There, that's all, that's it. I'm gonna leave it at that, at that because otherwise I'm gonna fucking go ham. Okay, well, I lied. My hair grew out a little bit since I got my perm, so it kind of just like is limp. So honestly, being in America, I feel like I don't have to try that hard when I go out, which is um good, I suppose. In Korea, I always feel like I have to try when I go out. I'm gonna go to the Apple store to return something. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. If you're familiar with cameras, I have a Sony camera, right? The A7S III. I always love Sony cameras, but the color science that Sony cameras use is always so unflattering. Like it's always so green, which is why I always color correct my videos. Otherwise they would look really green and yellow and nasty. Canon cameras always have the most beautiful coloring. So what I did was I bought this little manual called EOS HD. They have the new version five. And it's basically on Sony cameras, there's different picture profiles, which are like filters 
basically. Like you can make, change the settings for different things, but I made this one so it's more Canon colored. So hopefully it looks more nice, just like straight out of the camera. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but anyway, that was my rant. Bye.